My grandmother's house is like a museum. Every week we would gather around her dinner table where she would tell different stories um, about the time that their house was bombed or the time that they had the hoses turned on them at Bloody Sunday or the time that they would march 54 miles and were able to finally cross the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Um, most people learn about Black history in history class. I'm blessed enough to be a part of Black history. That's my family story. I've been Ralph David Abernathy IV my whole life. That's just who I am. But at the same time too, when you really sit down and you really think about it and reflect on it, it's unbelievable and unreal that I'm connected to these people. My grandfather is Martin Luther King's right-hand man. My grandmother typed the first flyer for the Montgomery bus boycott. And my father was the youngest person arrested in, this civil, in the history of the civil rights movement at five years old. Um, every time that I'm reminded that I don't want to go hard or I don't want to push myself to the limits of my abilities or I feel as though I want to give up, it's a reminder that I stand on the shoulders of giants and I don't want to be the weak link in the chain. I think that at our core, we all just want to be in loved and accepted for who we are, free from judgment, disrespect, or ridicule of others. Many of the issues that we see today are the same issues that my grandfather, Martin Luther King, fought against. Change really starts with empathy. Um, being able to put yourself in another person's shoes, step outside of what you might experience every day, and be able to step into the shoes of how somebody else might go through on their day-to-day -day life and what experiences have shaped their way of thinking. I think that we should all have people in our lives and in our circles um, that are different from us, that have a different set of experiences, that have a different way of thinking. Um, that only helps us be able to form better relationships um, and enrich our abilities to be able to sympathize and empathize with others. In storybooks, the color black is typically seen as negative and empty. And I think I can say for most of us that we even grew up being afraid of the dark. Teachers told me that black was an unacceptable answer for your favorite color and black is still my favorite color today. So I think that uh, my dream is to see the beauty that I see in, in blackness and black people. I want the world to experience. I want the world to see and love and view with beauty, not just the aspects of black culture or black people that are palatable um, and marketable, but I want them to see beauty in the aspects and the parts of black people and blackness and black culture that are washed over and misunderstood. And I promise that I'll learn and discover the beauty in all of you as well. My grandfather never, never intended for it to be a one-way street. Um, he wanted acceptance for all people, and he started that work back in 1956. There's no telling what my future would have been if it weren't for the efforts of my grandfather, Martin Luther King, and ultimately the people that were willing to pay the ultimate price, which is death. They were willing to die so that I would be afforded those rights and those, those opportunities.